Hello students, today uh, we will look at adaptation of the skin to function. This is Mental Generation with teacher Angie. Uh, the skin has so many roles as you can see. And uh, it comes into contact with the world. It's the largest organ in the body. Did you know that? It's often injured or affected by diseases. It feels cold, pain, heat, and we all treasure our skin. And today, uh, to begin with a quote, uh, education is our passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to the people who are prepared for it. Are you prepared as a student to conquer your future, to get the best out of yourself? Are you? Now, before we continue, uh, take this chance to, I, I want to ask you to, uh, to subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and share with your friends. And we start. The diagram of the skin, uh, you can see it has several layers. There are two major layers, the epidermis, which is the upper layer and the dermis, and the other structures. There is the protective function, as you can see. Um, this one is done by such structures as the conified layer, the malfigent layer, and the sensory nerve endings as that we have in the skin. And they are I explained as they are in the video, where you have the conified layer having dead cells. The dead cells are filled with keratin that form a tough layer. That's why it does the protective function, protecting from mechanical damage or invasion by bacteria and water loss. Now, bacteria thrives more or, uh, in uh, water-filled cells, but it, that the dead cells of the skin in the keratin-filled uh, cells have no, like they don't support uh, invasion. So that's one way the skin protects itself from by bacteria. The other way is through the malfigent layer which has melanin filled cells which protects the skin against the harmful effects of uh, UV rays of the sun and then uh, the sensory nerves, nerve endings, they have sensory receptors to detect stimuli of pain, pressure and temperature from the external environment and enable the skin to give the correct response for protection so that it's not injured further. Moving on, the skin protects itself through the function of the sebaceous gland that secretes sebum, which has antiseptic properties and keeps the epidermis and hair of the skin supple and waterproof. The other one is subcutaneous fat, containing fatty tissue that encloses some organs, acting as shock absorbers, offering some protection to such organs in the body. The other function is served by the skin is excretory function. This one is done through the sweat glands, ducts and sweat pores because sweating is a way the body loses water, uh, mineral salts and uh, urea in trace amounts. It is produced by the sweat glands, stored temporarily in the sweat ducts and released in the sweat pores depending on the immediate needs of the body. The skin serves to function as a thermoregulatory organ such that during high temperatures, for example, the hair and erector pili muscles work towards temperature regulation. So in high temperatures, the rectal pili muscle relaxes, hair lies flat, that is close to the skin surface, enhancing heat loss. Now, I just coined this hot relax lie word to help you remember the action of rectal pili muscles and the hair. It's important to discuss them together. Never discuss hair alone. It is the action of the rectal pili muscle that enables the skin to behave the way it does in different temperatures. So remember, hot relax lie. Very easy to recall. The other way is through the action of the blood vessels in high temperature, there is vasodilation of the superficial blood vessels of the skin to increase blood flow to the skin surface, thus enhancing heat loss by radiation and convection. And the sweat glands and ducts, in this case, in high temperature, more sweat is produced. It carries away the latent heat of vaporization as water evaporates from sweat on the skin surface, reducing body temperature. On the other hand, in thermoregulation, on during uh, when the temperature is low, then the hair, hair, hair and erector pili muscle come into action through the er erector pili muscle contracting. The hair erects to trap layers of air, which prevents heat loss by forming an insulatory layer. Remember, the hair is a bad conductor of heat, so it is then be able to retain heat uh, on the body surface through the skin. I coined this called contract erect uh, word to help you remember this. So called contract erect. Contract, that is the action of a papillary muscle, and erect, the action of the hair. 
Next, the blood vessels vasoconstrict to reduce blood flow to the skin surface that reducing blood flow, reducing heat loss, sorry, by radiation and convection. Now, remember to also subscribe to the channel so that uh, as we continue, you will have supported the channel greatly by subscribing. Uh, thank you as you do that. And for those who have subscribed already and you're watching this video, we appreciate you at Mental Generations. The other way is through the action of the sweat glands, ducts and pores. In this case, less sweat is produced for temperature retention. Remember, sweating is a way of losing body heat. So more sweat, more body heat loss. Less sweat, less body heat loss. On to the homeostatic functions of the skin. Uh, there is maintenance of uh, constant body temperature, that is thermoregulation, through sweating, through the behavior of blood vessels in different temperatures, as we have discussed uh, before, and through sweat production, or through such processes as shivering, that is the action of the muscles of the body and uh, the bones, initiated internally by the hypothalamus. The other homeostatic function carried out by the skin is through sweating, because this involves losing excess water, and that is partly an osmoregulatory role. And there is also uh, excretion of the mineral salts and traces of urea. This is an, it is both an excretory and thermoregulatory role, but controls water and ion balance in the body also an osmoregulatory role but carried out as homeostasis remember homeostatic functions seek to uh, regulate or keep the body's internal uh, uh, environment at a constant anything that does that then it's through thermoregulation it's also through osmoregulation and through excretion Lastly, there is a synthesis and storage function carried out by the skin. Uh, these ones are not homeostatic per se, but they are general functions of the skin, where the skin has melanin granules in the malphigian layer that are responsible for the synthesis of vitamin D. And the skin also has adipose tissue for storage of excess fat and acts as an insulatory layer against heat loss. Now, these are just general function, especially the synthesis and storage function. They are not homeostatic per se, but they, you can bring them along in your essays as you discuss the general functions of the skin. I did this video based on requests, several requests that I got on my email and in the comment section. So I did this in honor of the request. Now, if there are any videos that you'd want me to make in biology, then please just reach out to me on the comment section or in my email uh, and I will respond. Thank you. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so because this is the way you support us and I appreciate you so much. Press that subscribe button, the notification bell also, hit it so that you can get notified with more uploads and keep learning, keep loving biology because biology is really cool. Now, if you have any questions, ask please on the comment section or through email. I hope this video has made it easier for you to understand the functions of the skin. Yes, that is my intention with this. Thank you and hope you write better essays on the skin from this time on. And please continue with the same spirit watching these videos because it's of great help to do so. Thank you.